Hey, it's Norm from Tested. I'm back here at Frank Ipilito's shop. Frank, you're working on the Zoidberg project, which if people haven't checked out, you should because it's amazing. An ongoing project and we wanted to check in. Uh, one of the things you talked about uh, when we first started this was that how you would sculpt around a life cast, uh, a model uh, that you've cast of someone, an actor, that you could work to to bake, build the mask. To make it fit them specifically, right. yeah. So we wanted to learn about the process of making a life cast. Yep. And uh, you volunteered to give me a life cast. Yep. So, gonna... so what are life casts used for in, in movies and production? And... Uh, whenever there's a makeup or a creature that's specifically designed to fit a person, you need to have their life cast so that it, it fits the contours of their face. And when they make prosthetics to make uh, you know old age or monsters or anything, like. It'll match up with their smile lines and where their eyes are and eye bags and all that stuff. So I'm just gonna sit in the chair, you're gonna get like a 3D scanner or something and... No, you're <laughs> gonna sit in the chair and you're not gonna move for about 30 minutes while we put silicone and everything else all over you. All right, we'll bring Will in, do some color commentary and I'll, I'll get, get life casted. So Norm's wearing a hobo tuxedo here. <laughs> Looks like a black garbage bag, Frank. Yeah, well, it's kind of the easiest way to do this. Okay. We're going to life cast him down to here, so. Okay, so we're protecting his, we'll... his delicate skin from the, from. No, I'm just trying to, you know, keep him from getting stuff all in his lap. Okay, okay that's good. So what's next? What, what's the first thing you do in the process? We're going to put a bald cap on him. Oh, I can't wait for this. This is fun. He gets to be bald. This is a silicone adhesive. It's called Telesis 7. It's uh, made for gluing on uh, prosthetics, like movie industry stuff. So what are you doing now, Frank? It looks like you're, you're taking off uh, bits of the cap, the leftover yeah. stuff. That's I'm, using a, I'm using a solvent that's made for this kind of a bald cap to just kind of eat away a little bit of the edge. So Frank, it looks like you're applying something else to Norm's head. I'm using a release cream. It's called cholesterol, actually. Oh, okay. And it's a leave-in hair conditioner. Okay. Um, and I'm also going to put it on his eyebrows and eyelashes, just so that the silicone doesn't stick to it too much. So just to be clear, it's it's to make the silicone come off easier. Yeah. This additive that I'm putting in is the same thickener from when I did the little silicone prosthetic on him. That one? Yeah. Okay, so this is the actual two stage. This is, yeah, this is another two part okay. silicone. You mix them together and then they'll turn into rubber. Okay. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do his ears first because I have a pet peeve about life casts and a lot of times people don't get the ear detail correct. Okay. So we just do the ears first and then we'll use a little bit of the excess to thicken around the, the bottom edge of the life okay. cast. This stuff is called Body Double from Smooth On. This is the standard set. There's also a fast one. So you do this by volume or mass? Yeah, this is one to one by volume. Okay. It's nice having these really bright colors. I think this is just another reason that Smooth On's like a really good forward thinking company. You have two very vibrant, very different colors. So you know when the colors are homogenous that it's mixed correctly. What's it feel like, Norm? It's slimy. So you guys are really gooping that up into like the folds of his ear all through everywhere. Yeah, the, the purpose of of doing the life cast is to get the most accurate reproduction of the person's head or face or features or whatever you're trying to do. Batman needs a cowl, then you have to make a copy of Ben Affleck's head so that you can sculpt, you know, the new bat cowl. So you're saying Norm could get a bat cowl now? We can make bat cowl. Can Norm still hear us? Yeah. Okay. It's muffled. For now. <laughs> He'll be fine. So this goes on pretty thick. How long is this going to take to cure, Frank? Um, the whole process is going to take about 35 minutes okay. from the time that we started on his ears to the time that he's out. So it's somewhere between 30 and 40 minutes sometimes. It depends. Sometimes we're quicker. It'll probably take a little bit longer because we're kind of yapping. And um, This additive is another additive from Smooth On. It's called Hyperfolic, and it helps um, release if you have a lot of hair. Like You could pretty much life cast me with this beard and it would just really? slide right out of the hair. Huh. Um, I've been able to put it on my arm hairs and just kind of swirl it around and just slides right out. It's definitely preferable to having to shave or... or... Som sometimes you have actors that you can't shave, right. that you can't have shave or they, they don't pay attention and they come with, you know, five o'clock shadow or... Not that there's a lot of hair on him, but just out of habit, I put a little bit of this in there. It gives me a little bit more work time and drops the viscosity 
of the silicone so I get better detail. So Norms, we're gonna go over your whole head now. So all you do is sit still and that's it. Just sit still. Eyes closed? Eyes closed. You guys are just glopping it on there and spreading it out. These are just spatulas, right? These are just popsicle sticks or tongue depressors or whatever you want to call them. Um, I've seen people do these life casts with their hands, like with their fingers. Scooping and stuff like it that. in. And... Yeah, just okay. like when you do alginate life casts, you typically use your hands. Um, I like using gloves because that way I can go between steps and clean up quickly. Hmm. But these gloves, like if I stuck my finger in the silicone, it'll inhibit a bit of it, and that means it, it won't cure. So okay. that's why I use the little stick and I don't touch the silicone with my hands. So obviously if the, if the silicone doesn't set up right, that would be bad because then you're gonna peel it off and you won't get a good mold. But is there other stuff that can go kind of sideways with this? Well, I've never personally had an issue with the silicone going bad. This stuff's designed to be very resilient to contaminants when I say contaminants, things that would make it not cure. So I, like, you know, I'm sure that most, most things that typically would inhibit silicone are, are blocked to a degree in this stuff. It seems like it would be kind of intense to be inside there right now. Um, you know, most people I know, it's kind of relaxing. It's very relaxing. Um, okay. You just kind of like, you know, you can kind of zen out, go into a little, your own little world. Get in a full face mud pack? Yeah, pretty much. When I did Danny DeVito's life cast, he was pretty much falling asleep when I was doing it. Okay. He actually was nodding and I had a, Danny, wake up. Oh. So I noticed you're not packing the nose holes like you packed the ear holes. So I yeah, guess that's no. probably a good thing. We, when you do these life casts, we go very carefully around the nostrils. Um, Cause that's obviously where he's still breathing, but um, it makes it so that uh, you don't distort the nose by putting like straws or something weird in there. Okay. And I think that if you would put straws in the nose, it would not only deform the nose, but I think that there's a danger in if you bump it, it cutting the inside of the person's nose. So I've never done it and I don't think I'd ever recommend it. There's so much information on how to do this stuff. That there should be no reason that you do, you know, horrible mistakes like sticking your hands in plaster. Which I've heard horror stories of. Hold on, wait. You mean people take a bucket full of plaster, and jam their hands in, thinking they're going to mold with their think hand? That, yep, thinking that they're going to be able to take it out, and they end up having to have their hands amputated. So, do you guys always start from the top for a reason, or just because that's that's where you start? You know, I guess it's like when you wash your car, you know, you start at the top of the car because well, the, the water runs yeah, down. Exactly. I think that's why I kind of instinctually do that. Because of the way you wash your car? Because of the way I was taught to wash the car. Okay. Like I just remember dad telling me, no, stop at, start at the top. Cause you know, you're a kid and you're stupid and you just start washing like, yeah, you, you know, the fender and you're like- The hose is right next to the wheels. Right? Yeah, exactly. But this stuff's thick. I guess it doesn't matter. I can start wherever with this, but I want to start in more important places with the material. Not that I ever really run out of time or anything like that, but you want to get the important parts first. The important parts are, are the face and the head shape. So this is the last of the material you guys have pre-measured, so. Yeah. yeah, this is the last This'll batch. be it. I really want to ask Norm how he's doing in there, but. So when this is cured, will this just pull over his head as one whole piece? No, we're going to slit it up the back. Okay. Um, just a small slit right up the back, which is why Nora thickened the center of the back of his head. Oh, all so the that's way up where to the, the top right stop? Here. Yeah. Okay. So this is, this is pretty much it. Like we're, we're all smooth now. Everything's good. All the thicknesses are good. So now it's just waiting until it cures? Now, yeah, now we got to wait a couple of minutes until this stuff kicks off all the way. So while Norm's over there resting, what's, <laughs> Lazy. what's next here? Uh, the next thing we're going to do is put a plaster bandage jacket on the outside of the silicone. This is going to keep the silicone in the right shape because silicone is just a floppy rubber. 
It's like those ice cube trays or cake molds or whatever. Yeah, just kitchen, like those right? things. They, they kind of hold their shape, but something this large is going to just flop in on itself. Okay. So we're going to make a plaster bandage jacket, a front and a back section, that when we take that all off of his head, we can put it back together and it registers and it, it'll be the correct So shape. that's what all the rest of these molds have on the outside. It look, almost looks like fiberglass or something like that. Kind yeah. Of. So these are the plaster bandages. These are plaster bandages. They're just... Can I? I'm gonna yeah. touch. I apologize. Yeah, you can touch them. But they're they're just like they're just like cloth with plaster infused in gauze, basically. Yes. Right? And uh, you dunk them in water. Okay. And wring out the water because you don't want them too drippy and soaking wet. Okay. And then we're gonna start putting them on the norm. So this is the mummy phase of the casting. And you'll go front to back on the seam. Is I'm that gonna, the... Yeah, I'm gonna do the front side first. Another long one. Hmm. Sure. Okay. And then keep going on those other ones. Yep. Does it get hot inside the silicone at this point, I gotta imagine? Well, the silicone's a bit of an insulator, but they will warm up. People, I've heard people comment and saying that it, that it does get warm at this stage. Yeah. I assume if you've done enough of these and you, you figure the pattern and you have a strict strategy for, for getting the pieces on. For the most that. part. Sometimes things we'll, we'll switch things up or whatever. Um, so my theory on putting this little piece here right now is that the most delicate part of the life cast is going to be the tip of the nose. Because if you set it forward or, mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, so I want to have this piece on there and done early. So that while the other pieces are setting up, you know, the last pieces are, are still a little bit soft. This one will have been on for a long time and it's the most set up. I mean, obviously I did around it. Will it just be one layer of plaster? Yeah, these are, um, these bandages are folded over uh, three or four times depending on which ones. Um, I'll need two more. So this step is how I separate the front and the back half. I take just slices of paper towels that are damp okay, and I put them on the edge of the plaster bandage and that acts as a kind of a barrier so that now I can go right into the next layer of plaster bandages and they won't stick. Got so that way the front and the back are two separate pieces. Because otherwise if I just went and started putting the back half on, he'd be stuck in there. Yeah, that would um, be bad. Yeah, that would be a bad thing. There we go. So I have this, um, it's like a pencil, but it's activated with water. Okay. So I just kind of put some marks. Oh, so these are your registration marks. Yeah, these are just, if it doesn't line up, I know that there's something wrong or something misaligned. And the front's already solid, pretty solid. Yeah. You want to get pictures next to Norm? Yeah, let's take some. Let's take some photos. Okay, so he's he, the plaster's dried. Yeah. Ready? Oh, that was easy. Pops right off. Oh God, Frank! Don't drop that. We'd have to do it again. <laughs> So now I just want to loosen up all around the edge. Okay. So I got my finger between the scissors and you. So I, I keep and they're safety scissors. Yeah, too, they're, they're so. little, you know, they yeah, roll, they're, but, they're, but I keep my finger underneath and I, I run the scissors up the length of my finger. And you're zigzagging so that there's no uh, runs? Well, I zigzag so that when you put these back together, they, they line up a little bit better. Uh. Because if you just make a straight line, it can shift easy. Okay. But if you zigzag a bit. You can tell where it should be at least. Yeah. Is 
It's much thicker than I expected, the silicone. Well, in the in this in this section, I had her make it thicker. It's especially thick. Yeah, it makes it easier to, to do this part. Wow, it looks really uncomfortable. Oh, oh it's so stuck to his skin. Norm, how are you? It's like a rebirth. <laughs> You're back. So oh my goodness. The reverse view of your face. Wow, looks like Norm, but backwards. So Norm, you've been life cast now. How are you feeling? You recovered? It's gonna take me a little bit, but that felt awesome. Can't wait to see how it turns out. Frank, what's next for this process? Uh, next is to fill it with plaster or epoxy or whatever I end up doing, and I'll get around to that in the next couple of days. Awesome, can't wait to see how that turns out. We'll have a little clone of me at the office. Let's check that out. All right, so we're back here after a couple weeks at Frankie Belito's shop. Frank, uh, we cast this, cast my head a couple weeks ago and now, now it's, what's gonna happen? This, this mold is it's all done? It's all done, I filled it with plaster and okay. now we get to reveal what a copy of your head looks like. All right, let's do it. There you go. My goodness, that is a striking likeness. Wow, I didn't realize there'd be so much detail. It's every single pore, it's all the forms. How did you think this cast turned out? I think this is a really, really clean cast. This, these materials are designed to take all of your forms and all of your detail so that we can sculpt prosthetics or whatever we need to. It would, wouldn't do us any good if we didn't have a perfect replica. All right, so you had the, the silicone uh, mold, mm -hmm. right? and you, two halves of that, and then you just combine that and then pour plaster in, what's the process? I basically just brushed plaster in and then as the plaster started setting, kind of built up a thickness inside of it. Oh yeah, a little, little heavy. And now I know what I look like, bald. Um, you'll be, you do this for all of your projects when you're working on uh, prosthetics for actors and, and other projects, right? Yeah, a lot of times we'll take this and then I'll um, remold it to make a master so I can make multiple copies mm -hmm. of it. Cause this, this mold is good, to, to make a couple of copies, but to really make them good um, and make the mold last a long time, we want to remold it again. And then you'll be sculpting a Zoidberg on top of that, so for the Zoidberg project, to make that Zoidberg mask. Exactly, so all this is in the article on the Zoidberg project, the life casting is in the part two, and then in part three is uh, how to remold this to make the master. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Frank, for giving us a sense of this process. And this is something that people can learn and read about online and try at home even. Well, there's a ton of information out there, whether it's on the internet, um, through Tested, um, through SmoothOn's website. There's, there's a lot of education. Um, and there's a lot of uh, simpler, smaller versions of how to do this stuff, too. You don't have to do a whole head. You can do just a face or just like a part of a face. Or, or, a hand. or hand and arm. Or your arm. Yeah. So um, just take these simple steps and you can apply it to just about anything. Awesome, and you can find a lot of that on Tesla.com. That's where the Zoidberg project lives. It's ongoing through next year. I'm so excited to see how that will turn out. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Frank. Thanks again. Thank you. See you next time. Now you're a real boy. <laughs>